Yo, yo. Starting in uh, a minute. What do you mean on the line? What does it mean? What does it mean? Let's see if I can't use a Wacom for most of the stream. Ooh. How are you doing, WireX? caffeine as you can tell what's in the box what's in the box oh I don't know if I can there we go it's like I'm in a shooter <laughs> you're doing sexy uh, you know and then, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm doing sexy. I'm glad you're doing sexy though. It's always important to feel that way. It's important. Let's update the clock. Okay. We've got a new follow button stuff going on. We got this. Hey. Hey. How you doing, Reeds? Got a... I need to find a better sound, but uh, yeah. Got this one, it's pretty cool. It's hard to read. <laughs> okay, so on the last stream, we were working on the ceiling thing here. What's up, Mech? How are you? Oh, before I get this stuff started, actually, there is something I wanted to show you guys. So, remember we were looking at Substance Painter and we were exporting out masks? And the masks had no padding? Um, talking to people that are also looking at all the plugins for Substance Painter and, and designer stuff, someone showed me how to turn padding on for the mass exporter. Something in here so I can show you. Oh, that's weird. Why is chat not showing? Oh, there we go. I had it turned off. Okay, so we got this mesh here, right? Whoa, with the, it's crazy with the tablet. Okay, so we got this mesh. Uh, normally you can right click these masks and you can export, export, export mask or export to clipboard. No sound? Oh, maybe only I'm hearing it. Interesting. Oh, that, oh, you're right. Cause I have the desktop audio off. Ooh, that's going to be, if I'm going to be able to listen to my own music. <laughs> um, okay, one second here. So normally we've been exporting our mask through right-clicking export mask to file or clipboard. Then there was a plugin that gives you a button up here and uh, parameters in another window. I think by default it comes in like this. 
So you can say, oh, I want it to be a targa. I want it to be, you can pick the resolution of the mask independently from the scene. And let's say I do a 2048, then I pick my directory. Let's see here. So I pick the directory and then I save it. But the problem is, is that the, uh, the exporter is not padding the mask. I think Reads is talking about the sound of the actual like uh, stuff that's popping up when people follow and whatnot. See if I can find the thing with the stuff. Oh, I can't do the Wacom to navigate. It's killing me. It's killing me, Smalls. Just give me two seconds, I will show you. So if you look up um, Substance Share, there's a thing called the uh, export masks and it just tells you to save it to your user, user documents, substance painter. I'm gonna go to that, user documents, substance painter, plugins, exporter mask. So what it gives you is these files, right? Um, If you go to the export.js file, and just right click on that, open it with, uh, I think notepad works, yeah. Go to the very bottom. I'm a little too simple to really understand all the stuff that I'm seeing here. But at the bottom, there's a padding. It's like map export selected layers. Padding is usually, it's set to false in both of these slots. Uh, just fill those out as true and then save it and then when you reopen your painter when you click this export wherever the export directory is located at for this tool will export the mask with the padding on which is super nice hey hey quilly willy andrew how you doing oh, my fingers are freezing So that's how I'm exporting out the masks now, and I'm getting a lot less like bleeding and stuff between uh, UV UV breaks. Oh yeah, and someone in Discord was asking about like hiding icons and stuff. It's just G. I think they accidentally found it by pressing all the keys on the keyboard, if I recall them saying that correctly. It's pretty funny. The amount of times that I've discovered things through just pressing keys on the keyboard to see what happens. Hey, Face Melt, how you doing? Face Melt. Dude, a lot of people playing uh, the survival coolie. It's awesome. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is we have like uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew O, one of my buddies, he talks about using um, a layered shader similar to how we're setting stuff up here. But he's, um, he's, he's unwrapping the way we're unwrapping, like if I go to this asset. UVs. So he's unwrapping like this, right? The downside with this is uh, wherever there is a UV break, you get a, a seam here where basically the tileable material. What's up here? Hello, hello. Oh my god, lyrics playing now too? Fuck. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so uh, I'll talk about, I'll answer your question in a second, Andrew. Um, so the seam, like you can see, it's pretty gnarly. 
That's that's visible because there's breaks in the UVs as well, right? I, tr I just tried to zoom into the UVs. So what uh, Matthew does is he takes this UV set, puts it into UV set two, where he's also baking his, his light maps for it. But in UV set one, he's he's like making sure that where these are at are welded and then maps everything that's non-unique, like all the just the tiling material stuff, maps that in the UV set one. So we'll be, I'm gonna convert my master material to be doing that, and then as we're updating things, like you can see down here, it's another problem. As we're updating things, I'll just fix, I'll do, I'll dip the UV set, and then we'll we'll clean up some of the seams. Harmless ghost, how you doing? All right, Andrew. So, what resolution do I bake textures, and what anti-aliasing? So anti-aliasing, I think, is more of a personal choice as to what value you set it at. Right now, I haven't been using it, but uh, you'll need it, especially when you start to get like really finite shapes. Um, as far as resolution for baking, it really depends on how you're authoring your content. Like for example, this this asset, all I'm giving this asset is. Uh, with the way that the shader is built, all I'm giving this asset is this packed mask, which looks like this, with the padding now too. So in the red channel I've got, um, I think it's just, uh, what is this one, moss? And then the green channel I've got like the edge wear, which is the highlighting. In the blue channel I've got the AO, if I had to redo this, I'd switch the blue channel and the alpha channel, but the alpha channel is the uh, mud pass. So the, because I'm only giving it a mask and a normal to work with, I don't necessarily need to worry too much about like keeping these resolutions for these two, two things low, right? So this mask, I'm going to get a 2048 so that I get like a really nice blending between the materials that it's blending between. And then the normal is what's depicting like all of the little extra details on the surface of the mesh, which actually I think is not input in this. Wait, what? Hang on. Oh no, it's there. It's just by default is the right one. How funny. So what I'm going to do today is, Ash, how you doing? A tread? It's a good poly count tread. Let's actually open that and check it out. Yeah, one thing you want to watch out for is banding. Oh yeah, this is a good read. Uh, Fear, can you actually, can you post that in uh, the Discord? Um, probably in the technical channel? I don't know, maybe that should go in the tutorial channel so that everyone's aware. But I mean, 4K and 8 anti-aliasing, why not? If, if it's not going into a game and you're not having to prove out a real-time experience, you can still technically say it's real-time, and I would argue that it's more important that your portfolio looks really good. Because you can always down, down res that stuff, especially with all the new pipeline stuff, like uh, painter and designer with it being scalable. Thanks, Fear. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna update the shader to, to incorporate that uh, second UV set. And then we'll we'll solve it later for the other pieces, and we'll just move forward knowing that uh, we'll have two UV sets. Okay.
And this material looks kind of blank because we're using material functions to blend. And then we're using the masks to blend between them. Oh, who, who was that? Advisable Robin, thanks for the follow, buddy. Very much appreciated. So by default, this texture coordinate node is looking at uh, coordinate index zero, which would be your first UV set. When we switch this to the second UV set by setting that to one, this mask is now going to be only mapped to the second UV set. So everything's going to look kind of whack. I'm trying to remember what else we're going to need to go into the moss. This is fine. The stone is a mask. That. Is that here? They're drawn to you. The robins are drawn to you. Like birds. Like birds. Okay, so this, this shader is going to look completely broken, but we'll fix it. Okay, as far as I know, that should be all I need to do. And get some moto up. All right, Andrew, have a good evening. The one and the same. Poor, poor naming of this asset, and it's triangulated. Blech. Remember, always save uh, a non-FBX version. Well, no, now that uh, now that you can save non-triangulated, which is kind of interesting. In the most recent moto, you can save non-triangulated. But if you look, we've got a UV set one. We need to do a. Two. We'll, we'll click that, double check everything. Okay, that's good. Copy, paste, save. Say what? Wait a minute. Try to think. We're in troubleshoot mode now. How good is Moto compared to Maya? Raider, how you doing? Raider three thousand. Uh, Moto compared to Maya? Mm, I'm not quite sure, actually. I used Maya a long time ago. 
I'm mainly a Max user, and then I switched to Moto maybe about two years ago, two and a half years ago. What is wrong here? Oh. Well, that's weird. That's not right at all. That's not the second UV set. What? Oh, that's super weird. I don't even know how to debug this. Because both of those are correct. Dude, I'm like super tired today. This probably is not going to help me. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens if I just delete this one. Save it. Just make sure it's updating the file. Unity's light map? I hope not. That'd be really weird. Uh, so you think it's actually generating the light maps? I think you might be right. Uh, because it does like an auto... It's probably doing an auto unwrap for EVs for lighting. Uh, generate light map EVs? That guy. There we go, so clear this. Go back here, so it's overriding it. So copy to save that, go back here. Fixed, you are a genius, sir. Was it Meliato? Thank you very much. Advisable rock climbing, you, you badass. That's awesome. Okay, so everything looks like it's correct again. Uh, we've got uh, two UV sets. This is good. Go unlit. We'll just correct these ones real fast. This should be pretty quick now that we know why that's happening. And then we're going to talk about trim materials. Oh, coffee's so good. So good. That go to this one. 
That's weird. I didn't even realize that that was on. So all of these are generating light maps based off of, uh, or they're generating light map UVs. Oh, that's weird that that one's accepting it like that. Okay. So it's the one thing you don't fully understand. So the reason that we're adding a second UV set is that way, uh, that way we can map the UVs to trim material texture sets without worrying about like the rest of the materials tiling the way that we expect them to. If that makes, if you know what I mean. If you're not all saying. Oh, wait a minute. We're just going to close that. Oh, thanks, Advisable. That's good to know. So when you import a model for the first time, let me save all this, uh, you can turn off the light map generation UV sets. We're gonna have to do that for sure. Let's see. What am I doing? There we go. Homie, how's the cold north? How are you doing, Mr. Picklock? Hey Chris, how you doing? Working back at turn 10. Yeah, buddy. Awesome. Work, 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 work. So can I explain one more time why I'm making a second UV set? Uh, so the reason we're doing a second UV set is so that we can map normal maps or masks, for example. So we, you know, the masks are uh, telling these materials where they are. Hey, Ponky. Ponky. Um, 
And then these materials are tiling individually, uh, separate of the UV set two. So UV set two is basically where I'm UV mapping where the masks are at, where the normal maps are at, like positionally on the mesh. Then UV set one, we're actually uh, just making sure that the, the islands are clean and all the breaks that we, we did in the UV set for good, nice, normal bakes are no longer there. That way you can actually have nice, uniform, even uh, textures tiling across the surface. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense. You'll see it, you'll understand a bit more when I start showing the trim stuff. Is this one trim B. Wait, is this right? No. Dude, lyrics playing, Chris. How crazy. Maybe it's this piece. Hey, cool. Cool. Yeah, if you don't get it, we'll, uh, we're going to look at it a bit closer as well here in a little bit. It's super weird that this guy is messed up like this. mesh in general is acting kind of funky. Watertight meshes are a relic. <laughs> yeah, they don't necessarily have to be closed at all anymore. Like the, the back face on this is not needed. So why the fuck? This one's fine. Source line map index. Da, da, da. Oh. There's no UV sets. What's Whoa, my pocket is vibrating like crazy. Gotta mute this bad boy. What's my preferred texture package? Uh, what do you mean by texture package? I mean, if it makes something look how I want it to look, I'm down. 
I use GIMP. <laughs> oh, man. I use the GIMP, man. No, uh, I mean, I use Photoshop, but it's pretty rare these days. It's still needed, for sure. Uh, I use primarily Substance Painter and Designer. Dude, why the hell is this mesh freaking out on me? Five meter wall mid dot FBX. Oh, it's looking at an old mesh location. Do you guys know if there's a way to point to a new mesh? Ooh. I've never opened this before. Interesting. GIMP is master race. GIMP's free. That's, uh, I guess that's about as master as it gets, right? Uh, I did use Quixel for a little while, but I just didn't, I like the, uh, I like the speed that, uh, designer tools or substance tools give me. Well, we're just going to save over that for time's sake. There we go. Okay. So up here, we've got this piece. Right now we're blocking out like the whole ceiling and how the trim is gonna work and stuff. Like this is this is trim as well. Close this. People do still use Quixel though, yeah. It's not, I mean, it's more of a preference at this point. It's a good tool. Yeah, Matt, Matt's evidence of it. Matt makes amazing work. I would not say that one is better than the other. It's more of personal preference. So I think what I'm gonna do is extract this piece out and just clean up the mesh so we can start looking at what we do with trim. It's like, it's the same reason that I'm using Moto and not like Max and Maya, Max and or Maya. It's just taste. The way that uh, Moto handles modeling and I love it. I love it. Whoops, I totally forgot to grab that. Oh, jeez. I did all that. That's hilarious. Okay. test mesh or trim. So 
how many people are playing uh Oh, dude, Chris Hodgson. The guy's a badass. I worked with him for a very small amount of time on the division. But yeah, that guy's really pushing uh, substance stuff, which is really cool. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how we're going to best approach demoing it. Because demoing it versus just doing it is... It's two different things, right? Who did it? Paraflex. <laughs> Paraflex 93. If you were born in 1993, you're officially making me feel old. That Jeremy guy's okay at designer too? Dude. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm shit at it. I'm getting there, but yeah. So for testing, we'll just export out this quad into uh, into Substance Painter, and we'll just actually no. I'm trying to think what would be the yeah we just do Substance Painter because then I can show you how it works, and then I'll actually just start ZBrushing like patterns and stuff that I want. So you can see. I started going through these photos and looking at patterns that I really like. This stuff, this stuff's really cool. Um, and then I just kind of grabbed all of them, kind of put them on like a sheet so I can look at like how they're set up. And then we can uh, figure the rest out as we go. Rafu, is it Rafu? Thanks for the follow, man. Dang, 1,100 hours. Thanks for the uh, compliment as well, Rafi. Unless I butcher your name, now you're not going to compliment me ever again. Feels bad, man. Oh, so, like, this one's really cool. I actually want to make this pattern. I want to make a floating normal decal of that that I can put on the... Um, on this stuff. Like, to go here... You can just float a card here that just gives you that normal information. So we'll look into making some stuff like that as well. All right, let's export this guy. <laughs> 20 different versions, that's brutal, man. Well, you can have whatever version you like here, dude. Tessellation or bust. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. Oh, jeez. Welcome, uh, lurkers. Nice to see you. Welcome, new people. If you like what you're seeing, just give me give me a follow. Just want some follows. Oh, I, I also I started looking into. Uh, what it takes to get sub for creative channels. We'll see, we'll see what I get back from that. Cause it, like it's totally different from um, what it would take for like a streamer streaming, uh, like Lyric. That's, like art streams are never going to get that level of uh, response. Let's see if this works. I haven't tried this before.
Do I know anything about master materials in Unreal? All right, right before we go into this, master materials. Uh, so I have one called master material. So don't mind how like simple it is, right? But you create a material and you expose, for example, this one says param 2D. I've right clicked and I've converted to parameter. And so whatever texture this node is will be exposed when I instance the material. So like I've said that it's a material map and it's in the group textures. So when I go and I right click and I create a material instance and I open that material instance, it's no longer node based and only the parameters that have exposed with their naming conventions are, are available. So basically it allows me to instance off one shader which allows for some pretty nice uh, iteration speed increases as well as performance gains. So, for example, this piece, if I open up the shader to it, you can see I have these parameters for it. Uh, the edge where I've exposed the mask for that, so I can click on this and actively change the tinting and brightness of it in real time instead of saving it and compiling it later. I can change the moss color. I can give it red moss. And that should be updating on all of these assets. Yeah, so now it's got red moss. Maybe we want blue moss. Because who, who doesn't want blue moss? Anywho, that's uh, Master Materials in a nutshell, I guess. Uh, there's more of that on the art station as well, or art station. I just read art station on the stream. Um, it's in a thing called material functions. It's in this guy. I cover it pretty, I cover the whole, like how that blending material is working. So we're going to turn off all these. I'm going to just, yeah, we're just going to do that. So let's say, <laughs> this is hilarious. say we want to do this type of tiling right and we've got patterns I'm just gonna do something really fast so we can get the point across looks so good guys so good oh man so awesome Gonna tile so well too. <laughs> With the self plug, boom. Where you went. All right, so we have our normal. It's beautiful, isn't it? So pro. So pro. Ship it, Zoltan knows. Zoltan knows, ship it. Okay, so for testing purposes, we'll just look at it in here. And we'll just apply. And I'm trying to remember if you can actually just drag. 
Not really. You can drag it in as a reference. So I've put the normal map on as a texture, and if we look at the UVs, I'm just going to move this out of the way. You can see it's in the UV space here. So the idea is that you can take this portion of it, unwrap it really quickly, and you can see I'm just mapping where I want this to happen. So I'm like, all right, I want this here. If it tiled really nicely, you can, uh, can do some tiling uh, just in the shader. Get that set up. You're like, all right, this one. So we want to have that pattern on it, right? So you're like, all right, that looks cool because it looks cool, right? Right, guys? Right? So we'll make that, uh, we'll make the second UV set, right? We'll copy this one and we'll paste it. Then we'll go back to the first one and then we'll actually unwrap it uh, uniquely so that this is all one. One piece. One piece. And then that's wherever it needs to be. UV1, they can be overlapping, all that stuff. It's fine. The one thing you want to double check with the UV set one is you're going to need to have your texel density uh, corrected. So I usually just project from view, then I relax it, and then orientate. And that's, that's good to go. Then we're going to need to take these guys, triangulate them. Because no one wants those horrible end guns. Project from view. Orientate. Actually, we need to relax first. Relax, orientate. I need to turn that into a script. Relax, orientate. Grab all the UVs, go to the UV edit window because I don't know how to get this out of this window. Uh, normalize, and then you want to make sure that scale wise they are corrected for scale the asset. So I'm doing 512 texture density per meter, I believe. I could have set that up wrong. This thing's confusing because it just says density and image size. It doesn't really say like, like is it 16? No, what's happening? Anywho, so then we take this guy, we'll export this out. FBX. Thanks for the follow. Kazer Gamer? Kazer? Kazer? Kazer. Thanks, man. And we'll bring it into Unreal and we'll just play around with it real fast.
generate UV light maps, make sure to turn that off. Okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna need to import that texture too, because it's so good. Okay, so we drag this piece out. Whoa, what was that? Hang on. Apparently, Skype is running. Why is Skype running? That is going to bug the crap out of me. It's one of those new Windows things, guys. Oh, it's going to bug the crap out of me. Ha! Ash, I can't tell you that. Come on now. Come on now. Okay, well we're gonna tilt this and scale it so we can look at it a little better. <laughs> Face melt, you are correct. Uh, okay, now we'll go to the master material. And we'll make a duplicate, uh, create a material instance, uh, try and test. Just make sure we're saving everything. Dude, the new Skype is super strange. Like it's just popping up and then like I bring up my task manager, nowhere to be found. There's no way to like kill it. I don't even know. Thanks Microsoft. I like you. I like you. But god damn it. <laughs> oh, Matt Johnson, right to the heart. Right to the heart. Okay, so we're going to look at this asset. We're going to drag this material on there. Oh my god, it's horrible. Oh my god, okay, hang on. I'm gonna switch to this real quick. I think it's Skype Preview that's doing it. I think I killed it. We'll see. Okay, so if we open this material up, this normal. I'm trying to think if we actually set the normal up correctly yet with the second UV set. not look like it this guy yeah this guy needs to be and 
Those are okay. Wait. What is this one? Stairs it. Okay, yeah, that's correct. So that close, close, close. Whoa, test, that's wrong. That's why. There it is. Okay, so minus the fact that everything is crazy on this material right now with the masks and such, you can see that we've mapped the uh, normals correctly to where they're at on the second UV set, but on the should probably, if I do this, delete that. Just generate a mask from this stuff real quick. Whoa, I hate this song. I'm glad you guys can't hear this. <laughs> and instancing and instances on different meshes. Uh, we can look at that. Um, not today, but we can look into that. Or like on the on the Discord, we can discuss it. There's a technical channel in there. if I just do this. No, I just crushed everything. Man, you really need that high poly if you want this baker to work. It's kind of annoying. So I can't generate masks from that. Anywho. Minus the fact that these masks are all crazy, you can see that the, the materials are tiling correctly and the detail normals are there. So like this, all the tiling of the actual textures themselves are correct. And it's all dependent on, um, if I scale this down even further, I should be able to go into the second UV set or to the first UV set and scale all this stuff down save yeah 
Okay, so I'm scaling independently uh, all the other materials minus the mask and the normal map that I've mapped out to this. So essentially I should be able to make a trim, uh, high poly, bake it all out to a flat texture sheet, and then create the masks to say where the moss is and where edge highlights are and stuff like that, and have a unique normal, but on a tile, so then I can just map UVs of all of the stuff way up here that you can't really, you wouldn't see other than like from, from down here. So that's essentially what we're, that's how that trim stuff works. I'm gonna delete all this stuff now. stuff. We're going to be looking at things like this, things like this. This trim stuff might actually take a couple streams. So I'm going to make some, I'm going to try and make this stuff look pretty good. Man, this tile stuff's really cool. I should make that in designer. I could probably make this stuff in designer as well. We'll see. We shall see. Anyways, we're at nine, nine o'clock and time. We've got 51 minutes left on the stream. So if you guys have anything that you want to look at near the end of the stream, just drop it in the work in progress channel on the Discord and we can look at it and we can do some some quick comments and critiques and stuff like that. Let's see here. So we've got this like weird looking head thing. Wonder if we can see that anywhere else, higher res. Some reference. Uh, just another heads up that I will not be streaming Thursday, um, just for stuff going on. So I'm going to be streaming tomorrow instead. So I'll be back again tomorrow, same time. And then after that, it'll go back to normal, just Tuesdays and Thursdays. I can see I can't see him better there. Oh, it's all good reads. I'll put it on the uh, YouTube YouTube channel. This stuff's good. I need to get stuff like this. So good. So good. Oh, look at this. That's cool, too. Hmm. I'm wondering how much I can do in uh, in ZBrush. The challenge, challenge accepted, I guess.
those flowers, these guys here. So because this is a trim texture, well, uh, the idea is that all of it is going to be just through normal map information. What's up, foxes? Umbra? Umbra, foxes? How you doing? Actually, don't need. I need this over here. Whoa! Real. Just got in. What's up, Dong? Dong, how you doing? Oh, you recently got into it from uh, 3ds Max. Uh, actually, now that you've said that, it's that's good because uh, the guys uh, at Foundry have made videos to help people that uh, are converting. If you want to call it that. Whoops. Avari02, thank you for the follow. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Oh, this brush is too weird for this. Flatten, maybe? Yeah, flatten works a little better. So we probably need to uh, let's do some clay buildup stuff. So we need to double our radial, I think. We'll see if I can math. It's not really the same because I need to do detail on this spot. Screw it. We're just doing it. We're just going to do it uh, with eight. Just going to widen this stuff out. So this stuff doesn't have to be perfect. 
we're just going for a specific look, right? Like this back, I'm just gonna, cause that's gonna bug me. The material stuff in, in Moto I freaking love. So when I'm using the move tool, if I hold down uh, alt, it will move uh, opposite of the normal that I select. So it's, it's an easy way to um, push and pull shapes. Already kind of exaggerating this a bit too far, so we're gonna pull this in. That we want to show the the roundness of the pieces behind. I'm glad you're liking uh, Moto, dude. I it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, that, so Moto Indie is great if you're uh, if you're curious about it. Uh, the only downside I've I've noticed with um, with Indie Moto Indie is it doesn't allow for scripts, which is just killer. That's a killer, man.
I am using the Orbs Brush Pack. Digit, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome people that are new to the stream. It's nice to see you. This is, uh, this is interesting. Oops. No, what have I done? Small band? What is small band? Uh, this is going to be ornate stuff. So what I'm doing right now is actually um, building a texture trim set that we can map uniquely to trim uh, up high. Like crown molding. Right now I'm looking at uh, a couple different details. So this will probably be one, of course. It'll look pretty good as a normal. Small band, that's uh, AKA slow internet. Oh man, brutal. Up high, down low, too slow. So let's, let's clean this up so it's not so uh, mushy looking. What happens if you hide? Oh, okay, it masks and hides, okay. Interesting. should be fine from this distance.
kind of want to exaggerate these. Uh, no music? No, so I don't do the music on the stream. That way I can get it onto YouTube for you guys so that the VODs don't get uh, wrecked by licensing. Um, but I implore you to play some music. If you would like, I can offer a playlist for you. There you go. Actually, not that one. Try this guy on for size. Just search that in Spotify. I think what I'm going to try doing is, is building these meshes, but then uh, exporting out height maps and then propagating those in Substance Designer to make tileable strips. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. Let's come up with some more more pattern stuff. This one's crazy. I don't know how I'm going to This one's Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is eight as well? Okay, but this one's much more. I'm just gonna start sketching. Oh, this thing looks so goofy right now. But I mean, sure.
way you guys are quiet in chat. Hope everything's okay. Hope no one died. That'd be horrible. If someone died in my chat, I'd probably never stream again. <laughs> Uh, do I make portfolio re reviews? Giving some tips for the guys who don't work in the industry yet. Yes, yes I do. Actually, what time is it? Is that why you guys are quiet? You don't want me to find out what time it is? Uh, near the end of the stream, uh, I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays usually. Tomorrow I'll be streaming again instead of Thursday for this week. But at the end of the streams, I uh, do portfolio review. I do critiques of stuff. Whatever you're working on. <laughs> My chat is quiet. God, I hope no one died. <laughs> so if, uh, Alex, if you'd like, um, go ahead and post your stuff. Uh, probably post it in the Discord. Someone can help you out with uh, getting a Discord link in chat, I'm sure. Um, and then we can look at your stuff. Come on, Reed, you never know, man. People drop dead all the time. Oh, I just realized I'm not freaking radial eight. Brutal. Wondering why everything was looking uh, semi unique. Luxembourg? Well, let's smooth this stuff out. Okay. Fold. Interesting. Whoa. Easy. Interesting. Hmm. Where's the, there it is. All right, just glancing at your stuff, Alex. We'll, we'll talk about it in, in five minutes. It's nice you have a lot of stuff to go through as well, which is good. Bit of a disclaimer before I uh, do that as well. You're okay with me just going for it when I'm reviewing your stuff. What is happening? I'm just gonna talk about anything that comes to mind, stuff that concerns me, things that I feel like aren't necessarily there that I think should be. this up to eight again. Freaking screw the pooch on that one. This is actually, we need to get rid of this stuff in the middle for now. I'll come back to you later, center area.
I will be streaming for another four, uh, 15 minutes. So it depends if your break is within 15 minutes or not. <laughs> Actually, hang on here. Interesting. Barbarian, how you doing? Hope things are well. Squinting. Achieve good leaves. Oh man. Uh no. <laughs> uh are you you talking about leaves and zebrush? I'm just gonna get rid of this back thing that's bugging me. Just in zebrush in general? Or leaves so I've I've learned that I get the most control this does not look like survival no it does not uh, 
Uh, I've learned for, at least for myself, I get the most control for making uh, ornate leaves by just modeling them. Um, and then just going with that. And then bringing those subdivided meshes into ZBrush and then doing whatever I need to do with them. But interestingly enough, we will be getting to organic uh, leaf stuff soon because I need to start breaking up some of the scene. After I get this trim stuff figured out and then we solve the ceiling, I'm going to go to uh, organics. Especially with sculpting this stuff, I'm getting the itch, the itch for the organics. Okay, let's go into review state because like we're cooking on time now. Uh, we will start with uh, Alex Ferreira. Ferreira, Ferreira. I like your your profile picture, by the way. You got that energy. So, let's see. Just ship it, man. No one will see that stuff anyway. Touche, touche. Student, two years doing 3D stuff. 23, good age, good age. All right, so I'm looking at this stuff. My initial reaction is that you want to be a character artist. But you enjoy cars as well. But your profile says 3D modeler and texture artist. Um, the only thing that is textured in here is this guy, the pirate, and then your, your VW. Um, what else we got here? So right now, my gut reaction when I look at your portfolio is that you're not sure which uh, route you want to go down yet, right? So do you want to be a character artist? Do you want to be an environment artist? Uh, you say texture artist in the title, so I'm guessing maybe you want to be a texture artist. So it's, it's hard to tell what you want to do. Maybe you want to make cars, which is completely another topic in itself. This is super cool. Nice. Yeah, would, uh, with this being like that, I guess I would expect <laughs> those thumbnails. Um, I would expect you to have this guy textured, even if it's just poly painted. Hmm. So first things first is you want to find out what uh, what department you want to be in. We have like environment art. You have props team. You have texture artists, lighting artists, uh, character art team, uh, character art vanity, weapons artists. Uh, the environment art side in big games, like I guess like The Division would be an example of a, of a really big game, uh, splits into the open world and usually like one-off mission or events. Um, yeah, so other than that, I would say I just need to know what you're interested in, like what, what route you want to go down. Because it looks like you're you're pretty technically savvy. This is this is pretty cool. This is actually. Let me look around real quick. This is actually. Like this one's pretty funny. I like that one. But this pirate is your strongest thing in your portfolio. And the key. I think is you had a lot of fun doing this one. <laughs> that you had a solid concept to go off of, so you knew exactly what you needed to make, right? Material definition is really good. Presentation is really good. Uh, I will be brutally honest with you, Alex, and I don't think that you need to worry about leaving Luxembourg yet. Uh, on a big budget game, 
environment artists tend to do more propping than actually making art. Um, they're thinking more about lighting, composition, and how the space works with the level designers. So they're more a level designer than artists, even though they're looking at composition, lighting, the, the play space as a whole. But yeah, this one's your strongest. Uh, I would pick, pick a route, like environment art, or character art, or vehicle artists. Yeah, these cars are pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know if you've modeled them fully yourself or if you've uh, just built a kit on it. I'm not like car savvy, so that's probably the main reason. <laughs> this one's great. Really enjoy that one. Um, but yeah, biggest thing pick a route. Pick a route, stick to it. If you want to work on really big games, then that's going to be that's going to be where it comes from. It's like you need to like super specialize and then get really good at that specialization. Hopefully that helps you, Alex. And you're welcome to always come in this chat and we can look at stuff you're working on. You can join the Discord. We can look at all the stuff. Okay, let's see. I don't know. Hopefully that's is that. Yet used to work on Forza. Forza environments. 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 <laughs> uh, does that does that answer your questions, Alex? All right. Let's let's find the environments. Where the hell? Where? Uh, da, 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 da. Where are we at here? I'm looking for the work in progress section. All right, so this, <laughs> there might be people that don't know this yet, but uh, when they post stuff in work in progress, I'm usually just gonna look at it and be like, check it out find where we last left off okay so this is our oh man I see Robin some Robin fear fear war action going on there we'll get to that in a second so I commented on these ones already so we got orange who's actually this is pretty cool he's texturing in 3d coat I don't see very many people texturing in 3d coat uh, if he's going for a stylized paint, which I'm trying to see if he responded, he has not. Okay. So I'll just say what I was, what I said earlier. So if he's going for a stylized painting uh, of textures. He's, he's going the, I would say he's going the right approach. Uh, it just needs to be a balance of like how, how broad you want those edge highlights to be painted in. And then smoothing everything out and possibly adding like a, like a sheen painted in. Other than that, it's pretty cool to see someone using 3D coat for painting. Uh, Tony, I talked to Tony already about, uh, he's building a scene out inside of like, it's like basically like a city behind a waterfall on a cliffside, which is cool. It's a cool idea. It requires a lot of work, and I can tell like the, a lot of work is going to this. Uh, my my comment on these images when I saw them was like my reaction was if these are instants or not, just because you want to cut down on how much work you're doing. <laughs> um, so making sure that these are instants, and I asked if it was plan to be in a game engine and I believe the response was yes so with that in mind I would strongly suggest just making this one asset in the in the engine and then propping and placing all this stuff and building your your city behind the waterfall in the engine instead of like in in Maya it's gonna make it easier on you if you're planning on doing real time uh, we've got Sam doing low polygon game design 
It's actually really cool. I love the uh, the trash here. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is if you're gonna go low low poly, um, possibly look at taking these these straight lines that that tell you it's low poly and play with those like exaggerate those to, and have fun with them because I mean when you do realistic stuff you you don't get to play with that type of stuff you you do but it's just to sell the realistic shape right so like making your um, the edge of the sidewalk kind of wiggle a bit just make maybe like three or four uh, edge loop cuts and shifting them up slightly just so that you break up these straight lines and it also looks like it's going to be awesome yeah dude this is cool Gotta watch out for all that trash. <laughs> all right, Joe P. Or Joe Pie. Super cool. Is this what is this uh, what is this made out of? We have a do we have a Joe P. In chat. I don't even remember if uh, Joe P. Is still in here. No, I don't. I don't see. I don't see a drop here. Anyways, this judging by how this is aging, it's either like a really old metal or it's stonework. Uh, I would try and make sure to figure out how these uh, are grounded together. Sweeney, how you doing? Like that? Stone? Oh, Joe P is in here. Stone? Okay. Um, if this top edge is going to be as thin as it is, Depending on the age, maybe you want to do a, a bigger chip out of it. Overall, though, the details are really cool, and I like the uh, little... I'm picking up this pattern, so you've got one here, one here, and one here, and then this one is almost... My brain wants to put it there. If you squint, it looks like this grumpy face. <laughs> I don't know if you're seeing that. Anyways, maybe just like take one of these points and offset it up a little higher. Maybe move this guy down a little bit or something like that so that the patterns don't form that you don't want to form. Saint Grail? Grail? What is that? I, I'm not familiar with that. Educate me. Educate me. Looking cool though. Andrew modeling out a uh, revolver. A vintage revolver style. This is going to be pretty cool. I look forward to seeing. It's too early to say anything about it. Although I will say that the approach that you're going is it's, that's good. I'm not a weapons artist, so I don't know. But this approach, this is how I would approach it. All right, we got Harmless Ghosts. What do you guys think of my first little project? First thing I've ever made without any real lessons, just playing around. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see how... Andrew's like, it's not mature enough. Interesting. Interesting uh, response. Oh, man. Am I not familiar with it? You gotta replace that thing with uh, something of equal weight when you remove it, or else people get get dead. <laughs> so this this scene's looking pretty cool for for your first go and like experimenting and stuff. This is cool. Uh, if you want this room to feel like uh, like it's like all the materials are communicating with each other as far as how they're placed, uh, think about adding like a, a floor trim here. That goes all the way around. And then it looks like there's a ceiling there, but you're not really getting bounced. Have you baked the lighting or is this all real-time lighting? If it's uh, real-time lighting, then that's fine. If it's baked, we need to look into uh, why there's not enough like bounce light on your ceiling. I'm guessing it's real-time because uh, I'm not seeing like 
nice like ambient occlusion and gradients happening across the surfaces. But we can talk about that in Discord and we can help you like move forward. So Ralph, to be honest, finish the process, but I don't consider it finished. Is it did you make this, Ralph? What is this? Ralph Rafu? This guy? Is this you, man? This is interesting. Your materials are really cool. Like you've you have a really nice sense for metals. Haven't baked it yet? Okay, yeah, we should look into that. We can talk about that stuff. If you look at my the videos, uh, the last two, I'm talking about light maps and baking a bit as well. Okay, so this is really cool. Design-wise, it's really awesome. You have uh, the biggest problem, I would say, is you have a lot of smoothing group, smoothing errors, which is probably because, let me see, the wireframe. Are you baking any normal maps or anything? Oh, you did this for the Moto test drive stuff too? Cool. Dude, that's that's awesome that you were willing to like uh, put yourself in that position in front of everyone and just like push yourself, you know? I did a few uh, challenges a while back. They're, they're great for motivating you. But uh, yeah, so the biggest problem I feel is you're having, uh, you're having a lot of smoothing errors. Uh, so you've got errors here, you've got just the way that the mesh is communicating with the way lighting is going across it and stuff. Um, and this might just be down to the, uh, the baking. What's your, what's the high poly look like? Is the high poly in here? The high poly is not in here. Uh, so we need to look at your smoothing groups and figuring out how to unwrap best for baking a material and getting a, the perfect normal. Is it motivating you? <laughs> you have a low, low poly and high poly here, just compare. I don't see the uh, I don't see the high poly in here. The two moto view. Oh, so like this one and this one. Okay, so yeah, so in your high poly, you're also having smoothing issues, which are translating as well into the model. Let me see if I can find like a. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, we need to look into uh, good habits for how you build your high polys and how you build your low polys. The second poly is the high, this guy. And so if this is the high poly, we definitely need to add like more edge loops along this edge because just smoothing this out will help you a ton. Just seeing how light wraps, like this area down here is really good. These little details down here. They look how I would expect them to look from the what's modeled there. The little pipes here are nice. This stuff's good. This is really good. You've got like a nice bevel here. Um, what is that? So, whoa. Uh, irregular uh, beveling can lead to some some strange like visual uh, quality issues where like you have like stepping that's irregular when you have that it tends to uh, break the illusion that it's real or, or leads you to believe that it's 3d more often than not is this your how long have you been in moto I mean, this is pretty cool though like the design is solid. I like this too. That's terrifying, whatever that thing is on the outside. Uh, uh, 
So the ratio for how much detail is going on is, is pretty balanced. Might be a little uh, busy throughout, but um, like what's going on in this spot right here is really good. Just like giving the eye uh, areas a rest like this, these panels, maybe that just should be smooth with this. So this is just like one giant piece. Kind of gives me the vibe of like a spider or something for some reason. Five to six months, this is pretty good for being in moto for five to six months. Mostly fooling around, cool. Yeah, you'll get, I mean, you'll get better, man. It's cool that they, you push yourself into like forcing some design and stuff like that. But yeah, we need to look at uh, how, how your high poly and your low poly are smoothing and then what that means for your low poly and how you need to prepare your low poly for baking. Cause like, if that stuff was, if the smoothing and all that stuff was fixed, this would already look like a, like a hundred times better. You're just getting some strange areas where like there's weird smoothing issues. Pretty cool though. Pretty freaking cool. Uh, what else we got here? We're already over the stream time. So let's just keep going through this stuff and then we're done. And then we'd be done. Tree and grass updates. So right now it looks like you're, this is cool you're doing this too, by the way. Uh, I'm assuming you're using um, speed tree. Uh, try and make sure that your branches, oh man, we're getting, we're getting into it now. Hang on here. Um, epic pen. Raph, I'm calling you Raph now, if that's okay with you. If it's not okay with you, I apologize, because I'm still going to call you Raph. Um, so, composition-wise, trees, we've talked about, or I've talked about wanting to talk about composition. Uh, depending on what type of tree it is, right, uh, there's some rules that you should follow with the way that trees are built. Uh, your trunk, let's say that your trunk is this thick, right? Uh, as it goes up, oh, this, this drawing is going to be horrible. As your trunk goes up, it will eventually branch like it is here. Uh, when a tree branches, these, the branches that come off of the main should be about half the thickness of the primary branch that it came off of. Uh, when it branches again, that branch should be half of the one that it's connected to, and so on and so forth until until it's nothing. Um, what else? Having branches that are on the same level is usually uh, unnatural. Like this, the one on the left is actually pretty solid. I don't know if it's the same tree, just rotated. But having it doing this is really good. Uh, another thing is the branches that are lower on a tree tend to be pointing up more and tend to be shorter either because they're, uh, they did not survive whatever was around them and snapped or broke. Uh, whereas the ones up top will continue to branch. But yeah, it's, a, it's important that, they, uh, that you stagger your, your branching. Like if you look at it like that, that kind of looks weird, but that's basically what's happening. And you're just, you're just updating like how wiggly it is. Wiggly. Coined it. Wiggly. So like if it branches up like this, that's fine that these branch out two points. It usually looks more natural if one is lower. Um, doing something like that. Also, this is a common pattern where it goes and then it goes off to the side real quick and then goes back up. Uh, poplar trees are a really good example of understanding how... What is going on here? I'm going to re-chat real quick. Engine knowledge is necessary for environment art. Dude, for sure. For sure. It also makes... Uh, makes it easier for tech artists to do their job and everyone else to do their job. Blueprint.
blueprints. Dude, I don't even... So, honestly, right now, I don't even know how to use blueprints. I need to learn that so that I can show you guys. <laughs> Master materials, we can talk about for sure. Uh, so, poplar trees. Poplar trees are great for understanding the shape of things. So, let's erase this. We're so over stream time, but I need to finish this. I can't just stop like mid conversation. Okay, so a poplar tree goes up, right? And those tend to just go straight up. And then the, the tree widens out and then tapers in and then it's like this, roughly. Uh, around this area is where the branches are longest and as they go up, they're shorter and shorter right where this tapers in like that, you'll also have uh, some shorter branches. Um, this tree is perfect for talking about because you get to see, it's easy to identify the nature of how a, a tree grows, right? So it goes up, new branches pop out at the top. So branches up here tend to be younger and shorter. Uh, the leaves, the leaves can be, um, a bit greener because they're closer to the sun. Down here, they're more saturated and deep. Super healthy. It's where all the water is being stored. Um, and then as it goes down, you start to get more of the brown branches, brown leaves, shorter branches, and then right at the bottom, some branches that are just kind of bent down. And those are just dead ones that are just kind of hanging onto the tree. So thinking about tree composition and how trees grow will answer everything when it comes to how you make a tree. Where branches start, where they end, how long they should be will be depicted by where they started or where they're placed rather. Hopefully that I could go on go on and on about trees. There's uh when I was working at Monolith on Shadow of Mordor and all the other Lord of the Rings games. Uh, there was a guy there that went to school for for plants. He just knew everything about plants, so he would just talk about like how they how they grow, how they work. It's crazy. You could show him a leaf and he could tell you what tree that came from, and most likely if it was from the region or not. And if not, where the guy probably got it. It's crazy. Where are we? But yeah, uh, with the leaves, make sure... Make sure to get some information on the leaves. Because right now they're just kind of flat with color. Chris is doing some cool ass material. That looks awesome, man. Um, Substance designer work looks really, really cool. This is <laughs> this bugs me that this bolt here isn't aligned with this one. Fix it, Chris. Fix it. <laughs> Either like align these up or like put them so they're equally positioned like a triangle. That particle effect's super cool, Chris. Progress is slow as fuck, but still, small steps. Fear with the badass lighting. That mood. These pillars look really cool, man. Looking good. Looking good. I would say visually, the, the these clover shapes that are on the pillars, maybe thicken them a bit, like fatten them up. That way you, you get the, the pleasure of seeing them at a distance as well. Just be careful, I, of course, because like it, it could turn into noise really easily. Oh, and you got your material, your ground material in there as well. Very cool. Yeah, it's coming along nicely though. I mean, you got like all all the shapes are there, right? It's just about like pushing the, pushing it to that final final moment. How these uh, how the floor terminates with the or how the pillars terminate into the floor. Uh, make sure to double check your reference and understand how those communicate. Cause that's, that's like one, like, you know, this of course, but that's like one, you need to feed them some burgers. <laughs> uh, this is this transition right here. 
a lot of people miss that or it, or like don't give enough attention to it so then you you get this really strange disconnect where the floor and the wall and the pillars meet where they all come together there's there's a communication that happens it's like a friendship a talk Super cool though, it's looking really good. Oh yeah, here's Chris's shooting star stuff. This environment's cool by the way, Chris. Once you get your uh, your substance material that you're working on in, you should you should show it. You guys see the shooting stars? So cool. So cool. All right, guys. I'm 17 minutes over. I got to get out of here. Got to spend some time with the lady, watch a show or something. Oh, thanks for hanging out. Love your faces. I'll see you guys next time. I will actually, I will see you tomorrow, same time. Is that Nomad Sky? Is it Chris? Have you been lying to us? Are you going to other planets and claiming that you've made them? Jada. Jada the gut. Thank you. Thank you for the compliments. No, thank you. <laughs> Till next time. I will see you guys tomorrow. Well, some of you. Some people like read. Can't make it, cause life, life beckons. I just went to space, filmed some stuff, easy mode. <laughs> I bet that game doesn't even have shooting stars. All right guys, I will check you later. See you tomorrow.